How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. And let's talk about invalidating data in SvelteKit. So this is super powerful. And what I mean by that exactly is we want to bring in fresh data without a reload of the page. All right. This is going to offer a really crisp user experience. And we're going to kind of refactor our implementation to kind of show you ways, you know, other ways you could do it. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at our example here. We just have a simple API route. I'm just grabbing date.now and we're just kind of like passing that through in the API route. And so as you see, API time and then our plus server.ts file. Okay. That's it. And inside our plus page.ts file, we are just kind of calling that API route and then we're just, you know, returning that in the load function. Okay. Really, really simple. And then we're just displaying that, you know, after we grab it from the props. Very, very nice and easy. Okay. And if we look at this page, every time I refresh, I'm getting some new numbers here, right? I'm getting that uh, representation of the date and time. Okay. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and introduce a couple things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to import invalidate. All right. And that's going to come from dollar sign app slash navigation. And let me just go ahead and paste this in here real quick. We're just inside of an effect. And this should be every three seconds, we're going to be invalidating um, that fetch. Okay, and remember that fetch is living in our plus page.ts file. So this is going to, you know, rerun and we're going to get that fresh data. So everything saved. Let's go ahead and move over here. Let me just kind of refresh the page real fast. And every three seconds, as you see, we're getting those different numbers, which is really cool. And so this is the most, you know, specific way we are invalidating a particular fetch. Now, something really cool that we could also do is we could label this, um, this fetch. So maybe this is like really long or you think it may change for whatever reason. You just kind of want to slap a name on this. We could just go ahead and use depends. All right. That easy. And let's go ahead and say like time. Oops. Let me put that in a string time. And I don't know, we'll just call it like now. And so what we can do here is we can go ahead and validate time now. Okay. So everything saved and let me go ahead. All right. It's already refreshing, which is really, really cool. And so that's just a, a way to kind of maybe organize your code a little bit, a uh, little bit better, especially if those URLs are like really, really long. Okay. Now, something we should also talk about is invalidate all. So if you don't want to invalidate, you know, just one particular thing, oops, don't want to invoke that right there. Uh, so if you want to just invalidate, you know, everything inside that load, fu load function, you can just use invalidate all. That's it. You don't need to specify anything. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. And so everything in here, if we have like multiple fetches, things like that, it's just going to run now. So I can actually go ahead and get rid of this, which is nice. Okay, so let's hop on over there and let's go ahead and wait three seconds. And as you see, we're doing the same thing. And so I know we don't have like multiple fetches in our example here, but just know if you did, all of those would be invalidated. So that's, you know, something to keep in mind. Now, I think this is a, a pretty healthy example of how you can do this. So let's say you wanted to, I don't know, um, let's say you have a dashboard and you want to update this, you know, every 15 seconds, you could just do it just like this. Um, or you can kind of like tuck that away with like refresh. We could just make it like a little, um, refresh function. Let's go ahead and do this. And obviously there's kind of like multiple ways on doing this. And let's go ahead and invalidate all. Perfect. There we are. And we can just like create a nice and easy button. So let's just do that really fast. Uh, we'll just say like, I don't know, new data. And inside of our onclick handler, let's go ahead and put in refresh. Okay. Just like that. So let me go ahead and save that. Okay, we're good. And we have this button now. So let me just refresh this. And as you see, we're not getting 
that you know those interval refreshes and now every time i just click this button we're getting new data so obviously this is really powerful this avoids a you know a lot of hassle uh, for us to implement. And so we can do this in like a first class felt kit way. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.